Hello everyone! A while back we responded to a video that attempted to argue humans and non-avian dinosaurs lived with each other in the recent past. The author of this video we responded to has unfortunately made other videos about fossils, so we're going to look at another one. Let's jump right in. The YouTuber responsible for the video we debunked is named Beyond Science, or BS as we lovingly called him. Yes, BS is trying again to use fossils to support his bizarre creationist and or conspiracy theorist narrative, and this time he's doing it in a video titled, Six Impossible Fossils That Could Completely Rewrite Human History. So let's see what he has to say. Fossils are the traces or remains of plants, animals, humans, or other organisms from the distant past, and is one of the most important clues researchers use to paint a picture of where we came from. So far, according to scientists, these clues seem to tell us that modern humans have been around for about 200,000 years. Before that, we were Neanderthals, go back for a million years, and we were basically a bunch of apes. The sad thing is that he's not even into his argument yet, and yet there's already so much wrong. For starters, Neanderthals were not our ancestors. We have fossil and paleogenomic data indicating that Homo neanderthalensis was a sister species to our own. We both diverged from a common ancestor some 700,000 years ago, and Homo sapiens first appear in the fossil record about 300,000 years ago. Second, we are still apes today as we have all the characteristics diagnostic of apes. Apes, or hominoidea, split from old world monkeys about 25 million years ago in the Oligocene Epoch. The great apes, or hominidae, split from gibbons about 18 million years ago during the Miocene. We humans nest within the tribe hominini along with chimps, several archaic facultatively bipedal apes, australopithecines, and a host of other homo species. How, how long is this video again? But what if this wasn't the case? What if there were fossils that tells a different story and paints a different picture of who our ancestors really were? If someone actually found and wrote technical papers on such fossils, then that person would be heralded as one of the most famous paleontologists of all time, not a guy with a fringe conspiracy theorist YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about some seemingly impossible fossils that could completely rewrite human history. First up, let's take a look at what seemed like a metal screw found embedded in a rock that is around 300 million years old. In the 1990s, a Russian research team which investigates paranormal activities claims to have found a screw about one inch long when they were investigating the remains of a meteorite in the Kaluga region of Russia. The screw was embedded in a rock that was later analyzed and found to be between 300 to 320 million years old. Researchers who have examined the photo of the object object say it's really nothing more than a segment of a fossilized sea creature known as a crinoid, which were marine animals that were supposed to have been around 350 million years ago. Others dismiss that theory as they think crinoids were much smaller and with different markings. At least to me, just by looking at the photos themselves, it really doesn't look like a crinoid, but we really won't know more until the group that is holding onto the fossil provides more information about what the fossil is actually made out of. First, let's address the fact that even if it were a human tool, it wouldn't be a screw. This is a screw. That would be a bolt. Let's look at the paleontology of Western Russia next. As it happens, there are a number of fossiliferous deposits in Russia around Kaluga. Directly southeast of Kaluga is Tula, which is known for fossils of the tetrapod Tularpeton, Acanthodians, Antiarchs, Placoderms, Porolepiforms, Osteolepiforms, Dipnoans, Struniforms, Actinopterygians, Conodonts, and Ostracods, among other things from the late Devonian. And wouldn't you know it, crinoids are also known from this time period. Third, BS tries dismissing identification as a crinoid by saying some unknown people believe crinoids were much smaller than the alleged bolt is. But much to no one's surprise, gigantic crinoids have been found in the fossil record with stem lengths greater than 11 meters. And last, BS really expects us to take his on-the-fly identification of the alleged bolt 
as more trustworthy than someone whose job it is to identify fossils? Of course, if you look at the picture of the crinoids he provides, then you see the exact same banding pattern as on the alleged bolt. Does BS avoid looking at his own evidence? Next. Next, let's move on to Antelope Springs, Utah, where in 1968, a man named William J. Meister, while looking for trilobite fossils, found the fossil of a human footprint instead. Researchers think the person who left the footprint had accidentally stepped on the trilobite, or it could be intentional if the trilobite really upset him. But anyway, he stepped on the trilobite and then eventually the fossil was formed. The fossil was studied by three laboratories and found to be valid, but what was crazy was that the rock in which the fossil was made existed five years. 100 million years before the existence of humankind. Also, trilobites existed for 300 million years but went extinct 240 million years ago. And check this out. The footprint was not just a bare footprint but actually a person wearing shoes measuring approximately 10 and a half inches by 3 and a half inches. Wait, that's my shoe size. But I was so careful. The finding was, of course, not without controversy as some researchers believe that although the trilobite was indeed real, they think the print themselves were formed naturally. Naturally. To me, the Meister print does look like a shoe print, and actually, human footprint fossils are not all that uncommon. If you remember back to the last video I did on BS, then you'll recall that he was relying entirely on a creationist account of the details regarding carbon dating of dinosaur fossils. We discovered that the creationists completely misrepresented the actual details of their findings, opting to show themselves off as incompetent scholars. Well, this story is no different. The alleged footprints were indeed found by William Meister in Antelope Springs, Utah, but they were not actually validated by three institutions as BS claims. Creationists Duane Gish and Reverend Boswell put this claim forward in a debate, and being a good investigator, Ernest C. Conrad at the National Center for Science Education decided to look into it. Two of the universities, evidently the third was forgotten, were the University of Utah and UCLA. Conrad wrote to the former and received this letter, quote, The footprint in question was collected by a man named Meister several years ago, and it was immediately jumped on by Melvin Cook, who is not a paleontologist, as evidence of human trilobite cohabitation. I have seen the specimen in question, and it is nothing more than a slab of Wheeler shale that has a fragment spalled off in the form of a footprint which reveals a trilobite, Erathia kingi. To reiterate, the trilobite is genuine, the footprint is not. Close quote. The letter also referred Conrad to an article by geologist William Stokes on the alleged footprints that roundly debunks them. Stokes notes that the outline of these so called footprints is the cause of a natural rock fracture. And the prints show no pressure exerted on the trilobite, which is a bit curious since the guy supposedly stepped on it. And last, but certainly not least, because trilobites are seafloor-dwelling arthropods, this guy must have been walking flat-footed on the seafloor. So, is there nothing BS won't believe? For example, the next item in our video, the Zapata footprint, was discovered by a hunter in New Mexico. The hunter was so intrigued by the find that he told his friend, Dr. Don Shockey, who had a strong background in archaeology and anthropology. Dr. Shockey, along with archaeologist Dr. Don Patton, returned to the site and they photographed and analyzed the footprint and determined that the stone the footprint was found in was limestone from the Permian period some 250 million years ago. Glenn Kubin did a takedown of the Zapata footprint, yes, just one, on his blog, so let's see what he wrote. Quote, Strict creationist Don Patton has asserted that a Permian rock from New Mexico contains a genuine human footprint. Called the New Mexico track by Patton and the Zapata track by others, the print is sharply outlined but shows a number of unnatural features. It evidently is not in stride with other tracks but occurs on a loose block of rock whose origin and geologic context has not been thoroughly described or confirmed. Indeed, without being reliably associated with any host formation, the print is of little anti-evolutionary value, even if it were genuine, which also has not been established. To date, no major creationist group has endorsed the print as genuine or even likely so. Close quote. Next.
Next, this is really cool. The London Hammer. This interesting item was found in London, Texas. Yeah, London, Texas in 1934 when a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Max Han, went for a hike along a creek and saw a small rock with a piece of wood sticking out of it. The couple found it peculiar, so they took the rock home. Many years later, Max's son George broke open the rock with a, well, hammer and he found another hammer. According to analysis, the hammer head consisted of 97% pure iron, 2% chlorine, and 1% sulfur. And the iron was so pure, it rivals our modern technology today. Also, the rock encasing the hammer was dated to the Ordovician era more than 400 million years ago. What's more crazy than that is according to initial measurements, the hammer itself is more than 500 million years old. It's so old that a section of the wood handle has begun to transform into coal. The London Hammer is easily explained as a limestone concretion around a late 1800s American hammer. The limestone itself has not been dated to the Ordovician. That's yet another misunderstanding on BS's part. The source rock the hammer was atop, though, was Ordovician. And the only report of coal in the specimen came from, who would have guessed, creationists. There is no independent evidence from any institutions that the specimen's handle is partially coal. Number five, the fossil of a finger. According to the journal Science, the oldest human fossil was that of a jawbone discovered in Ethiopia from 2.8 million years ago. But a pretty gross discovery made in a quarry in Texas in the 1980s beats that by about uh, 97 million years. The discovery was that of a fossilized finger, which according to researchers, must have been buried in a oxygen-free environment because that would be the only way for soft tissue to fossilize. The finger fossil was x-rayed, which revealed what appeared to be bones and bone marrow. Although researchers can't say for certain which species the finger belonged to, they don't believe it belonged to primates. The fossil was found in Cretaceous rock, which means it is around 100 million years old. So this is a vaguely finger-like rock that hasn't actually been linked to any strata. Popularized by creationist Carl Baugh, the supposed finger, which doesn't have knuckles like a normal finger, is claimed to have the fossils of bones inside following a CT scan. An evolutionary biologist friend of mine notes that those blurry images don't look like any modern CT scan of fossil bones he's ever seen and asks why the owners don't scan the rock with modern technology. The only thing apparent in the stones is that the rock material is concentrated in the center. Like a normal rock. And finally, a 500,000 year old spark plug. According to the show In Search Of, hosted by Leonard Nimoy, in Olancha, California, three people went searching for geos for their gem shop. The geos they collected didn't really seem out of the ordinary, but when they got back to the shop and was attempting to cut them open, one of the geos broke their diamond saw blade. Within the geode, they found what looked like some sort of modern device, and the outer layer of the device was encrusted with fossil shells and two metal objects that resembled a nail and a wire. Washer. The inner layer of the device was decomposing copper, which surrounded a porcelain cylinder. The geo that the device was encased in was analyzed by a geologist and said to be around 500,000 years old. The device was also x-rayed and that's where it got even more intriguing because researchers saw what looked like some sort of a tiny spring or helix. There has been many theories as to what the device was, with the most popular one being that it was very similar to a modern day spark plug as the internal mechanism seem to match. Much like the London Hammer, the rock around the Koso artifact is just a recent concretion, and the spark plug has been identified as a 1920s Ford Champion spark plug. Now, BS mentioned that a geologist confirmed the rock to be ancient, however the identity of the geologist has never been revealed, and no one has ever written technical work detailing the age of the rock. When I started working on this video, I found so many discoveries of ancient fossils and artifacts, which I will do a video on that later. And these seemingly impossible items look like common man-made things we see every day. But we don't give these items any weight because they don't really fit into what we feel like our ancient timeline look like. No, we don't give them any weight because we know they're either natural formations or lacking any form of identification. None of the alleged evidence BS provided has any bearing whatsoever on ancient history, but instead reflects on his wholly creationist and or conspiracy theorist sources. And it's so scary for modern day scientists to accept that, hey, you know what? Maybe there's a chance we were all wrong about this. I mean, no one is 100% sure what happened 200,000 years ago, 1 million years ago, 100 million years ago. But somehow it's ingrained in our heads that this is the way it was, this is how the ancient timeline progressed, and this is it. That's exactly how you became who you are today. But let me know what you guys think about all this. Thank you all so much for watching this video and this channel. 
See you later. I think you don't have any clue what you're talking about. I think you've never read a technical article in your life and you have no idea how to fact check your sources. You don't know why the researchers say the things they do about prehistory because you've never studied any of the data for yourself. Yet again, we see that BS is just repeating long falsified claims with no care for the accuracy of his information. BS shows the worst brand of ignorance, someone who relies on others to be ignorant for him. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.